You're watching KLTX, Channel 15, serving the city of Lufkin. Happy New Year from Memorial Cooking Innovations. Today, we are going to kick off the new year with a couple of healthy recipes and some healthy tips to get you started for a healthy 2020. Adriana, how was your holidays? It was a great, it was great holidays. Good. So today, we're going to make a salad and then an entree. And this is a green bean salad that I um, kind of got inspired from watching the Trisha Yearwood show on the Cooking Channel. this recipe on the um, Food Network website if you just Google that um, Trisha and green bean salad so we started with some fresh green beans and some snow peas and we boiled those you, um, brought a pot of water to boil and Adriana you did these earlier you did yes. the green beans for how long I did the green beans for three minutes and then um, I added in the snap peas to it so okay for another minute mm -hmm. or two and then we drained and blanched them, which just means you drain them and then um, immerse them in some ice cold water. And that stops the cooking process. So they're just a little tender crisp um, rather than being cooked through for this salad. So the first um, thing we'll do is make the dressing. Okay. And with that, we're going to use a fourth of a cup of olive oil. Okay. And this is one of those salad salads and dressings. You can just make the dressing in the bowl you're going to serve it in and um, add your salad ingredients later so it saves a little bit on your cleanup time. So a fourth of a cup of oil, <clears throat> a heaping tablespoon of some stone ground mustard, so it's that really kind of grainy, pungent flavored mustard. I think that's good? That looks good. It smells very good. And a teaspoon of low sodium soy sauce. Okay. You can kind of eyeball that. Yeah. I think that's good. That looks good. Okay. And then two cloves of garlic. So we're going to use our garlic in the tube that we've come to really like using because it's so easy and mm -hmm. convenient to use. Always good to know it's fresh. A couple squeezes of that. Looks good. Good. And then um, the next thing that we'll add is a little bit of sea salt and okay. some ground black pepper. And just whisk that together. All right. And we're making the salad first because the entree that we're doing today is not going to require a long um, cook time. So we're going to have this ready to go and in, in the fridge ready to serve. All right. That looks like it's come together nice. Okay. Yeah, Chicken. That looks good. Okay. So next we are going to go ahead and add our green beans and peas. Okay. And then about a um, half a cup of dried cranberries. All right. Why do we do the dried cranberries instead of like fresh ones? They have ones? a little sweeter flavor, whereas the fresh ones are going to be a little bit more tart. Okay. You said okay. about half or half the, a cup? Okay. Yeah. So probably that whole thing. So the whole thing. And okay. a half a cup of toasted almonds. We toasted those in the oven earlier at about 375 for a few minutes. Okay. And we're going to also add some parsley, some flat leaf parsley and some fresh dill. You can, we bought fresh dill, looks like this at the store. And the way to kind of really, instead of chopping it, is if you just take your kitchen shears and just kind of lightly snip, and that will help. Kind of, I think it makes it faster and it doesn't um, kind of smash the, the herbs when you do it that way. We do the parsley that way as well. And then the next ingredient is the dill. Okay. About three tablespoons of that. 
and that smells really good. And then our final ingredient, this is a new one that we haven't used before, and it's fennel. And it is um, <clears throat> kind of a crispy, sweeter um, vegetable that you can use in salads or you can saute it or roast it in the oven. We washed this earlier and it also has a little bit of a licorice taste. The recipe called for half of a small bulb. This one's a little bit big, so I'm just gonna kinda cut a little bit of a chunk out of that. And it looks kinda like an onion. So we, we're just gonna use the base part. We're not gonna use the actual sprigs? Right. Yes, okay. so you just use the, the sprigs. So actually, my um, mother-in-law grew this one year. Um, because the fennel attracts the caterpillars mm. that one day turn into monarch butterflies. So that oh, was a pretty beautiful. interesting little project. Yeah. It definitely looks and resembles an onion when I, yeah. when I look at it. And it does, you can smell it's not a real, um, real strong licorice smell, but it is, does have that faint hint of that. And okay. I'm just going to cut those little woody ends off of there. I just want to thinly slice it and go ahead and grab some of that and throw okay. that into the bowl. Does it matter you want it like a thicker slice or a thinner slice? Well, I would think a thinner just because you want it to kind of complement the salad, right. not necessarily overpower the flavors. Okay. So I think that looks like plenty. Yeah, I'm going to take a smell. I've never smelt it before, so... I can definitely smell that licorice yeah, aroma definitely. for sure. You can also buy um, the spice called anise or anise. It's called N-I-S-E and the, the seeds. So if you can't find the fresh fennel, you could sprinkle a little bit of the seeds into the salad to get the yeah. flavor. If you don't really want to use this at all, you could probably use some um, red onion or yellow onion yeah, that'd be to good. give it that same texture and look. Right. So we'll mix that together. Get and you want to kind of dig down into the bottom of that bowl to get the um, the dressing kind of to thoroughly coat everything. It's really pretty. It is. Very festive. And then we'll just um, stick that in the refrigerator and until it's ready to serve. You can also serve it at room temperature, but um, I think it'd be a little bit better chilled. Maybe a little bit better of a crunch too. Right. Chilled. I think so. And so this salad is going to give you a ton of fiber because of the fresh green beans. Also, a lot of your antioxidants from the, the, both the green beans and the peas and the, even the cranberries are going to have a little bit of fiber and nutrition. And, of course, your almonds are going to be a heart-healthy fat along yeah. with the salad dressing. So let's um, stick that in the fridge and we'll move on to our next dish. Okay. For our entree, we're going to make chicken um, breasts with some sun-dried tomato cream sauce. How does sounds, that sound? That sounds wonderful. So first, if you would, just take a tablespoon of oil from okay. the sun-dried tomatoes. We bought the sun-dried tomatoes um, packed in oil, and we're going to saute the chicken breasts in some of that oil. So just put it in here? Yes, and we have a little bit of olive oil already in there. Perfect. So while that heats up, just a couple things about food safety when it comes to chicken. Can't emphasize it enough, is that if you use a cutting board to put your chicken on or anything like that, you want to make sure that you wash it thoroughly afterwards. Wash your hands anytime after you've handled um, raw chicken because of the risk for um, foodborne illnesses. So, just going to take a little bit of of our salt and sprinkle on this side, and then after we and we'll put that <clears throat> face down in the pan, and then we can add more salt and pepper to the other side while that okay. other side is browning. Get a nice sear on there. Yes, and of course, chicken is always um, a lean cut of protein and gives you lots of your B vitamins, especially vitamin B12, comes in a lot of your protein products. So, 
Um, let's go ahead and add this to the pan. Okay, you want to put all of them in there? Yeah, or? put them all in there, okay. salt and pepper side down. And then the other thing with cooking chicken is you want to make sure it's at a good temperature um, to know that it's done. And so we'll check the temperature on that when we get, get to that point. All right. Which is usually about 165 degrees is, is what you want to cook that chicken at. So let's a little bit more salt and pepper. More salt and pepper. And then just kind of move that around a little okay. bit so it doesn't stick with the tongs. So January starts out, everybody has usually got some resolutions that they want to follow for the new year. Um, but I don't remember the exact statistics, but usually by the end of January, most people have forgotten their resolutions. So um, maybe a better way to think <coughs> about that is to just make some health goals. <coughs> and just gradually add some new healthy habits to your routine. Right. So probably having a goal like, well, I'm gonna lose 20 pounds for my class reunion by the end of March is not usually a realistic goal. But if you set up to eat more fruits and vegetables, cut back on the refined sugars, especially the sugar-sweetened beverages, um, try to incorporate some exercise, usually that's gonna help you get that weight loss without going on a strict diet that usually sets you up for failure. And always seems when you do those types of goals, like you don't ever stick to them. Right. Come up with those realistic goals and you actually maintain them and actually do get them done. Right. But when you're like, oh, I'm going to lose 20 pounds, you probably exactly. aren't even going to make the goal. I mean, yeah. some people, you know, they say they are, but then they typically right. don't. Or so. you lose the weight and then you go back to your old eating habits right. and regain the weight back and kind of get into that cycle of weight gain and weight loss and every time you do that you tend to lose more muscle mass muscle is um, burns calories more efficiently and so over time your metabolism can slow down with those repeated weight losses and then gains back so you can probably turn those I might have to turn them again got a pretty golden color yes and these are the thin sliced chicken um, breast so they will cook a little faster um, which is always good especially if you're cooking on a weeknight and trying to get supper on the table good <clears throat> do you have any health goals for the new year I really want to try to eat a lot more fresh fruits and vegetables um, you know having celiac now I feel like I'm gonna take this new year to a new approach you know yeah. I want to make sure I'm getting what I need and not missing those nutrients where I'm not getting before. So, right. um, but my goal is to have more fruits and vegetables and get that goal set. So I'm set for the year. Yeah. Typically, that's that's a good one because that one is automatically going to cut the calories. Right. And make sure you get all of those nutrients. And you want to try to focus on a variety of foods. A lot of um, clients that I see tend to eat <clears throat> the same thing every day. Um, day in and day out and that really limits the variety and the nutrients that you get from your food yeah do you plan on what are your new goals mine is for to the exercise new year? more I okay feel like i have a pretty good diet and um i can always stand to use a few more fruits and vegetables but um try to increase my physical activity include a little more cardio rather right. than just doing strength training i could so, agree to that yeah. i could so well, the chicken's coming along good. It's nice and golden. Looks like that chicken is nicely brown. We yes. checked the temp. It's 165. So we're just going to transfer it to a plate while we make our sauce. If you were in a hurry, you could probably even cut these into little smaller pieces or even buy the little um, tenderloin uh, strips that are already cut. So next we're going to add the sun-dried tomatoes. Okay. They are about a half a cup. Just gonna add a little more oil. Both the oil for the sun-dried tomatoes and the olive oil are heart-healthy oils. And then the shallots. If you haven't um, used shallots before, they're in the produce section. They're just like a little small onion. Um, when you cut them 
just like an onion. It's a little more difficult because it is quite a bit smaller. But they have a kind of a stronger flavor than an onion and just add um, a little different taste and texture to the, to the recipe. So we're just gonna saute those for a couple minutes. All right. So these are not looking nice in color and smell great too. They do. So I like the so, idea of using the sun-dried tomato oil as part of the oil to cook it because it does kind of infuse everything with the flavor of the sun-dried tomatoes. So do sun do sun-dried tomatoes add any like minerals or anything? Yeah, sure. They've benefits? got some um, again some vitamin C and also uh, vitamin A, the lycopene, which is an antioxidant that okay. we try to get more of. Um, so they're a really, actually with the sun-dried, they're a very concentrated source of those. Okay. So, so they almost the same as good as so they're fresh or? Well, the, the fresh, um, if, like you wouldn't eat these probably in large amounts because right. they're pretty strong. Okay. So, um, but to add a tomato flavor to something, you know, like a sauce or even put a few in a, in some soups. Right. Or, you know, a few strips on a sandwich would okay. be good, Yeah, too. that would be good. Yeah. So what are we going to be doing next? Okay, so we're going to reduce the heat just a little bit. Okay. And we're going to slowly stir in the cream. I would use this spatula. Alrighty. And so we're using heavy cream in this recipe, which is a, a higher fat <coughs> content cream, but we're only using a half a cup for the whole recipe. So um, it's just going to thicken really nicely and add um, some rich flavor to the recipe. And then once that starts to bubble, we're gonna stir in just a little bit of white wine. You can also use chicken broth. I'll pour that in while you stir. Okay. So if you don't have half and half, could you use milk if like you're at home and you, you just could. don't you have? Might, um, want to add a little bit of flour to your milk to okay. or cornstarch would work too right to help thicken that up a little bit okay so we'll bring that back to a boil okay. once that starts to simmer we'll be ready to finish the rest of the recipe all right okay it's thickening up and then add our chicken nicely. back we can add the chicken back now it's simmered for about two minutes. We'll just kind of stick that in there. So it's gonna soak up some of those flavors from the right shallots and pepper or probably tomatoes. Flip them over and that'll add another coating. There we go. Perfect. Smells almost Italian. Yes, it does. Oh, some pasta would be really pasta, good with this, right? Or I'm saying the carbs back, um, or maybe some uh, brown rice or wild rice oh, yeah. blend as a starch to serve on the side. And of course, we have our green bean salad that's in the refrigerator, or even some nice crusty French bread. Oh, yeah, and you can use this little dipper. Yep, and serve it with the rest of that um, white wine that we used. Yeah, that'd be really good. So eating healthy and being on a, on a diet, um, per se, doesn't have to be bland and tasteless. You can always use a lot of the condiments that we've used today, the mustards, vinegars, um, the sun-dried tomatoes, your fresh herbs and seasonings, all of those will add a lot of flavor without adding a lot of calories or added sugars or fats. Um, right. Some of those, maybe the sodium might be a little high, so always read the label if you're trying to limit your sodium intake. Um, but all of those types of things are good to have on hand to just kind of spruce up a meal. If um, you're not really familiar with cooking, another good option to experiment with flavors and things is to use one of the meal delivery kits. Yeah. They're kind of pricey, but um, you can usually a cut... Um, custom order so many a week even if you just order a couple meals a week and do those it helps you a learn how to learn some cooking skills and it also exposes you to new and different foods vegetables condiments and that sort of thing i like how everything's already pre-packaged pre-cut for you and you can kind of see right and you don't waste you know you're using what they send so you're if you buy sometimes produce 
at the store other ingredients and then you That's bad have extra leftover and don't know what to do with it so. right and most of them send the recipe so even if you um, don't continue to order those meals you can always pull out those recipes and Look buy it. the ingredients and it, you know it's something you've already tried so you know you like it so that looks great let's um, turn the heat off on that and then we'll serve up a plate of food all right So the salad looks good. We'll just kind of give it another stir because some of that dressing can kind of tend to settle to the bottom. And since this is a recipe we haven't made before, maybe we should give it a taste yeah. and see if it needs any additional seasoning. Okay. Get a little... We could use a little bit of salt and pepper, I think. I agree. So it's always a good idea if the first time you make a recipe is to taste it. And of course, people can always add salt and pepper at the table, but you may not always want to do that either. You want people to like it the minute it goes in their mouth. Let's stir that up. Very colorful salad. It is. And so we're ready to serve. So let's, um, if you'll hand me those tongs, we'll okay. put this on the plate. This chicken here. Get some of those tomatoes on top. Get some of the sauce. Pretty color. Yes. And we'll have that complement with that, the cranberries that are in here. Yes, so give us a nice serving of that. See if I can get some of the some of the goodie as we call yeah. it. The cranberries. Yeah, I definitely think some wild rice or some quinoa, just some kind of steamed starch would um, be a good complement to this. There we go. There we go. Okay. Awesome. So what we've done is um, taken our chicken breast, sauteed those, and added some sun-dried tomatoes, some shallot, and some heavy cream along with a little white wine. I will mention if you use chicken broth, make sure you use the low sodium because it does um, add more sodium and we already have, have added salt and pepper to the recipe. And then for our side dish, the green beans and snow peas mixed with a little bit of fennel, our new vegetable of the month for yeah. us. And with some toasted almonds and cranberries and um, a dressing with a mustard base with some lemon juice and ginger. So it's got a pretty complex flavor. And then also we wanna just garnish it with a little bit of flat leaf parsley to give it a little more of that Italian flair. And I think this looks like a good start to a new year. What do you think? Sounds, looks good. Great. Well, we've got another episode in the books. Yes, and thank do. you for kicking the year off with me. Well, thank you for coming with me. And hope you'll come again and help us change the world. One, one bite, bite at a time. time.